everyone, my name is CW and today I'd like to share with you my thoughts about the Tamron 35-150 f2-2.8 to So this lens is one of the most anticipated lens in 2021 and I have been using this lens for about a month I'd like to share with you how I feel about this lens The lens covers a 4 times zoom range from 35mm f2 to 150mm f2.8 and it consists of a few popular focal range which is 35, 50, 85 and 135. So on paper this lens seems to be a Swiss army knife of a lens but how does it actually feel after using for a month? The only negative things that I can say about this lens is the weight and the size. So the lens weighs about 1.3 kg and the weight distribution of the lens when mounted on the camera feels very off-centered it's almost impossible to operate the camera using a single hand. And the weight of this lens also make it impossible for you to vlog with it unless you want a hog size bicep after vlogging with it every day. It probably save you the money to go to the gym. And no, the lens is definitely not wide enough for you to vlog with it. So what about the size of this lens? This is the size of a Tamron 35-150. And yes, this is my dog. When, the si when extended, the size of the lens is pretty comparable to the size of my dog. The lens comes quite easily packed. Inside the box, there is only the lens with wrapper, paperwork, and nothing else. I like this non I like this no nonsense packaging that the Tamron has. With we really don't need those camera pouches that stays in the original packaging and only comes out to see the sunlight when you are selling the lens. Good job, Tamaron. The Tamaron 35-150 feels pretty solid on your hand and the resistance of the zoom ring feels sufficient. The focus ring is buttery smooth on the lens itself, you can see that there are three focus set buttons, a custom dial, custom switch, AF and MF switch, and also the USB-C port. You can use the Tamron lens utility to customize your lens. The Tamron 35150 is compatible with the newly launched Tamron Utility app. Using the Lens Utility app, you can update the firmware of the lens, customize the focus set button, and also change the characteristics of the focus ring. The lens firmware update is pretty straightforward. Once you select the lens firmware update button, the firmware update link will be activated and it will bring you to the website which you can download the firmware and update your lens. There are three modes in which you can customize your focus set button. You can do that through toggling the switch on the lens. So each mode allows you to set one of the four functions from the custom menu. The first function is the assign function from camera. This basically makes the button similar to what you have on other Sony G or G Master lens. You can assign the function of the focus set button through the custom menu on the camera. The second function is the focus preset. In this function, you can use your focus set button to set a predetermined focus point by holding on to the focus set button. And at any point of time, if you need to go back to the focus point, simply press the focus button and you will be able to go back to the preset focus point. You can also set the, fo you can also set the focus speed for this function. The third function is AB focus and this simply allows you to toggle between two focus points by pressing the focus set button. And again, you will need to set your AB points by holding on to the focus set button at focus point. The last function is to allow your focus set button to act as a toggle between a focus ring or a aperture ring. You can also set your focus ring rotation direction in the app in either the default direction, similar to the Sony lens, or the reverse direction, 
like that on the Sigma lens. The Lens Utility app also allows you to set focus through either on the non-linear mode or linear mode. Further, in the linear mode, you can set the angle of the focus distance from 90 to 360 degrees with 90 degrees interval. The lens has a variable aperture at both the widest end and the narrowest end. At the widest aperture, it has a variable aperture of f2 to 2.8 and at the narrowest aperture, it can go down from f16 to f22. Alright, let's talk about the image quality of this lens. At 35mm f2, you do see some vignetting at the corner of this image and this is improved when you stop down. The center of the image is extremely sharp and there is no improvement or degradation as you stop down the aperture. At the corner of the image, you do see some degradation of the image quality and this is improved as you stop down. At 70mm, you do see some vignetting at the corner of the image and this can be improved when you stop down the image. At f2.5, the center image quality is extremely good. There is some slight fall off at the corner but the corner image is still very usable. Stopping down to f2.8, the image quality at the corner improves. Further down to f4, the corner image is extremely sharp. At f5.6, you see a tech sharp image at the corner and it remains beyond f5.6. At 150mm f2, you do see some vignetting at the corner of the image and this is again improved when you stop down. Not surprisingly, the center of the image is excellent. The image quality at the corner is also extremely sharp. Corner image quality is improve when you stop down to f4 further down to f5.6 and the image quality remains excellent beyond f5.6 the bokeh produced by this lens can be sometimes distracting as you can see from this image there is a certain capped eye shaped bokeh at the side of the image and it forms a circular pattern around the subject there is some pincushion distortion in this lens as you increase the focal range from 35 to 150. Chromatic aberration is pretty predominant in this lens. There's a very obvious magenta color fringing at the back of the focus when shot against a very bright area. There is a very noticeable flare from the image shot by this lens. And the flare will be more noticeable when you shoot directly into the sunlight, especially during golden hours when you are taking portraits. I strongly suggest that you look up the definitive review that Dustin Abbott has put up for this lens as he has put through this lens through his intense testing regime. I'll paste a link to his video on the description below. So all in all, I find that this lens is a very amazing lens, but it's not for everyone. It is more suitable for professionals that make a living out of photography and because this is a very expensive lens that is very versatile but there are some limitations to it so first of all you do for travel photography you would want to travel light and this lens is extremely heavy with this lens you would likely strain your back when you're carrying it around so again this is a zoom lens it's not image quality wise is not ideal if you're comparing it to a set of prime lens. All in all, I find that this lens is an amazing lens. It's good for its versatility and also image quality. It's a lens that is suitable for professionals that earns a living out of this lens. And it's also suitable for people like me that takes photos of my dog. As you are aware, doggies are zoomies that zooms here and there. And having a range of 35 can keep the dog in focus and in the image when they are up close and also at the telephoto end, 150mm, you can catch them when they run away from you. So alright, that's all for the video and thank you for watching. If you have already purchased this lens, share with us your thoughts about this lens on the comments below. And if you do not have this lens yet, 
tell us in the comment below if you still want to purchase this lens after watching this video. So and if you like the video please like, subscribe and comment below.